Okay, I think now we got things going. Yeah, so sorry, everyone. I really do ap apologize for the technical issues. So uh, once again, my name is Patricia Miranda. I am the moderator of the Angry Beavers 25th Anniversary Virtual Reunion live stream. So I really do appreciate you guys for coming on by. I really appreciate you guys for being really patient with me. So yeah, so as you guys know, today is the day that the Angry Beavers had premiered on Nickelodeon. And as we can see here, we have uh, the DVD and uh, right now we have a few people who are going to be joining us. So I'm going to let everybody in and so they can be able to introduce themselves. So here we go. Hello there. Hi. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Good. Hey, Rob. See who's here. Hey, Rob. I'm wearing my bowling shirt. Oh, very nice, very nice. <laughs> what? Brandon. Oh, I yes. Did anybody see me? Hey. Yes. Hey. Are you recording? <laughs> yes. Oh, uh, I'm, we're live on YouTube, but I could record this for posterity's sake. Yes. There we go. <laughs> there you go. There we go. So, yeah. Mike's Mike Sabaya. Hey. Are you in oh. the there you yes, are. Yes, I am. <laughs> oh, very nice. Very nice. But I can't. Can anybody hear me? Oh, we can hear you just fine. Daddy. Daddy. Can you see me? Uh, no, no, your, your, your uh, camera's not on. I'm sorry. Oh. Keith, turn that. on your camera too. Oh, there it is. Start video. Yes, there you go. Hey. 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 Hello. Oh. <laughs> Came and okay. went. Hey! Oh, yes, we're getting more people in here. Yes. So, all right. Well, I just want to say thank you guys so much for coming on by. We have 25 people who are currently watching us. So, uh, for those who are wanting to introduce themselves, then go for it. All right. <laughs> uh, okay. I'm RP Creek Corian. I was a storyboard revisionist on the Angry Beavers. Very nice. Very nice. Nice to see you. Thank you. Next. Michael? Uh, oh, I thought Mitch would go first, but uh, oh, my, name, my name is uh, Michael Cusabios. I was um, one of the lead designers and the character uh, uh, supervisor for uh, Angry Weavers. All right. Uh, go ahead, Mitch. I'm Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, worked with all I worked with all these people on the Angry Beavers. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so yes, he's the creator. Um, without uh, him, then this wouldn't exist. So <laughs> welcome, Mitch. And we did have Mitch on the show a few years ago when we were celebrating the 20th anniversary of the Angry Beaver. So it's well, um, welcome back, Mitch. Thank you. Thank you. Ciao, All right. By the way. All right. Uh, who's next? <laughs> yes, please. Who's next? Anybody can jump in. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll jump in. I'm Pat Shinagawa. <laughs> And I am one of the directors. Rob's another. Who's yes. Rob is here. So one of the directors on the show. So yes. um, it's so much fun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll talk about that. So okay. um, yes, uh, who's our next guest? I see Chelsea here. So why don't you introduce yourself, Chelsea? I am here. I should be the last one to go. But uh, <laughs> I am Mitch's. And I did uh, two episodes, voice acting on the Angry Beavers. Yes. <laughs> he was a lot younger then. We all were, Rob. <laughs> Elsie, you got cut off at I am Mitch's. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you now. Love child. I did episodes <laughs> voice acting on the Angry Beavers. Proudly. Uh, yeah. Yes. I'll, I got the job all by myself. <laughs> <laughs> Robert F. Hughes, uh, also director with Patty. Um, I came on for, I think I started on the pilot, the, the uh, not the pilot, the first episode as we wrestled it away <clears> from <throat> Duncan Wall. Right. Um, and, uh, pretty much rode it to the beach up until the show, uh, ran away from us. <laughs> and Keith? Yes. <laughs> I'm Keith Kachorik. As a writer on the show, ended up being the story editor. And uh, was with it for the 
for the long haul since, uh, since the Gunther Wall days. We also did the Bible together. Right, right. We did the Bible and, uh, and uh, yeah, back when, when this was all that existed. Oh, wow. What is that? <laughs> Very nice. Yes, the snowbound pilot episode. Yes. Oh, I can, I can do you one better. You ready Ooh. for this? Yeah, the Spanish one. Can you see Ooh, that? It's paper. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Rich, do you want to explain this? <laughs> yes, please explain this. Oh, go ahead, Rob. Let's hear your excuse. I found it in the garbage. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'm that's like, actually that's actually not too surprising, considering that when I did the As Told by Ginger 25th anniversary virtual reunion live stream, one of the storyboard artists had sold away so many of their dr original drawings to somebody else years ago. And oh. then when I was telling them, hey, you know, maybe we should have them back so you could showcase them. And so he actually went to the guy who, he, uh, you know, who had bought it from him. And he's like, yeah, you could just take it back. <laughs> so, yeah, that's how he was able I to show my ginger, too. Oh, wow. That's nice. <laughs> yeah, I worked on Ginger. Oh, you did? Oh, oh man. I should have I should have contacted you then. <laughs> oh, and hey, Arnold, too. Excuse me. Oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm very sorry. I should have I should have called you about this, Rob. My apologies. But, uh, yeah, the hey, Arnold one didn't go so well. Yeah. I ran away from that show. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, my. I'm like, We're all very there. proud of you. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah, but no, you were bringing up that pilot uh, VHS tape. I I'm definitely really curious to have the conversation about that. Like, how did it all came to be, like the, the creation of the Angry Beavers? So, yeah, I'd love to hear the story about that. How much can you get for that VHS, Keith? <laughs> so yeah. what, this is what you call blackmail. <laughs> <laughs> someday, someday I'm going to need something from Mitch. <laughs> and, then, and then this tape will be played. Yeah, but nobody will be able to play it because nobody will have a VCR. <laughs> really? That's it. Yeah, exactly. Oscar will. I'll just hold up my reel to reel up. How's that? <laughs> my Super 8. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, I just recently watched it and I see that the designs are really different and the the way that the personalities of the beavers were really, really different and also that they were done by different voice actors. Yeah, we uh, when we did the pilot, I was working at Gunther Wall, who all these people uh, and we had a window to pitch shows to uh, Nickelodeon. And so Lee Gunther came to me and said, could you come up with three shows that we could pitch to them to see if we can get a pilot? And obviously they picked Beavers. Uh, but there was one about a house uh, that actually the family living at the house was alive and interacted with the family. And wow. I came up with the third one. So uh, Mary Harrington is the one that, that said, uh, mm. I really like these Beaver guys, uh, but they should be brothers. She finally, she came up with the brother idea because brothers have to stick together regardless, which is a great idea. So mm -hmm. we did the pilot in 93, somewhere in there, 94, I guess. It took about a year to do the pilot, working with Linda Siminski from Nick. And then it went on the shelf because they wanted to focus on Hey Arnold. Right. So I, I left and went to <clears throat> Warner and did a season of Freakazoid. And then while I was doing Freakazoid, hey. Paul, to, uh, we want to do beavers. So I'm okay. like And we gotcha. started with Keith and Rob and Patty. And uh, speaking of which, uh, we have another guest with us. Uh, we have Micah Wright joining us. So hi, Micah. I'm Micah. Where are you? Wow. Micah like War Dog, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> He's in Hawaii from the looks I'm, of it. I'm getting, a, I'm getting a loop from somewhere. Okay. There you are. Hi, Mark. Hey, how you doing, Micah? Hey, Micah, 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 Micah. What's up, Rob? Rob? How's it going? Going, going, going. <laughs> From falling down all those stairs. Wait, oh, I know what's going on. Uh, I, must have, I must have the YouTube link open. Oh, the YouTube link's open. Okay, yeah, there you go. Turn down. Look at me. Look at that. It's like a computer is a brand new thing or something. Right. Hey, how is everybody? We're all doing good. Thank you. Good to see you guys. Mitch, how are you? I haven't seen you in like... <clears throat> years like uh it's good to see you 
Same. He's and elusive. Chelsea, hello. How are you? And you're blurry. Seen, you're Mitch, I haven't seen you since Berlin. No. It's Berlin. I haven't seen you since Berlin. <laughs> where where uh, they actually aired the Angry Beavers, but it was called Die Biba Brudos. Die, die, yeah, Die Biba. Berlin. <laughs> I sat there and watched, I watched an episode in German that I directed, and I went, what the hell's going on? <laughs> It was, it was long here. enough ago that I had forgotten what the point was of the thing, and I couldn't tell from them just, yeah, 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 at each other. Yeah, general. but Rob, uh, we did the same thing when they were in English. When they I know. To... <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. but it was funny in German, they'd, they'd be speaking German, but every now and then you'd hear the word spout. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, hey, all right, it's not translatable. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but you had uh, you had mentioned the voices, and uh, when yes. they finally decided to do the series, Richard was hired early on. He was like up front. We wanted Richard to play Daggett, mm -hmm. but we auditioned about I don't know over two hundred people to play Norbert. Wow! And Nick Bakai was the last person that came in. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the one we took, and that's how it worked. Wow. Now, speaking of the other pilot, I mean, there was another pilot that's been circulating around the Internet for quite a while. And there are some people who don't even know if it existed or not, because it's never been like showcased online, which is um, where the, the handcuffed one. So I know that it was uh, posted as a fact from the uh, splat or, you know, the Nick Rewind as it's known now that there were two pilots. One was snowbound and the other one was handcuffed. So can you confirm if that was a real pilot that was like pitched to Nickelodeon or was that kind of like, you know, rumor that was like circulating for quite a while? The handcuffed thing doesn't ring a bell for me, but oh. doesn't mean it wasn't done. <laughs> cuffed, okay. Cuffed together. That's what it was called. Cuffed together. Yeah, I don't remember that. Actually. What was that? What I seem to what do you, I don't Cuff remember that, Patty. Uh, up, all, up all night because it was. The... <laughs> yeah. So, all right. Sorry. Well, I guess we'll have to continue um, saying that it might be a rumor because if you guys don't even remember it, then who knows where that <laughs> that rumor I came from? Yeah, looking it up. I think that's know, fantasy. Yeah. I don't... yeah. <laughs> that's probably who knows. Oh no! Do not look up Angry Beavers handcuffed. Do. <laughs> Oh. oh my gosh. Oh. Oh, guys, come on. <laughs> oh my gosh. I fell yeah. right into that. I fell yeah, right into it. You... Three minutes. You made it three minutes. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> well, I think uh, for the voice actors, I think that Richard and Nick worked very well together. We did, uh, when we were recording, we actually put one of them in the booth and one of them was on the main stage. Mm -hmm. So they could do that back and forth banter. But we'd have clean takes on both both lines of dialogue, well, so we, we could put, take out the f words. We, and... we also we also put Nick in the booth because Nick is a toucher. Oh, really? Oh, really? <laughs> Did it get all steamed up in there? Yeah. Yeah, we had to we had to we had to keep Nick separate from the other. Was, was Nick in the booth and Richard was on the stage? Right. Yeah. I always pictured Richard in the booth, like yeah the. You had to contain him. Richard no, if we did put Richard in the, in the booth, he would have shattered all the windows. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but I remember, Keith, you had to tell Nick several times, put your shirt on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. This is not a, this is not a pants-free zone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. But I had, work, I had worked with Nick before on, um, on a sketch comedy show. Oh, okay. And I think um, when we were casting about, when that whole thing was going about, I said, maybe look at this guy. Because Nick is very good. Um, <clears throat> he's funny. He's a writer, performer. He's done a lot of sitcoms and things like that. Works with Chuck Lorre on a regular basis. So he, he's a really funny guy. Really good guy. Didn't he, yeah. didn't he go over to sports or something after after Beavers? And he, like, he did, like, he did. Before Beavers. But he did a character. I think he used to do it on ESPN. <laughs> Coach Lertzema. He would do like during uh, NFL games and stuff like that. He would do a spoof kind of, uh, you know, commentary. Yeah. Yeah. He was that, he was that cat too, right? On Sabrina. Yeah. Yeah. He was Salem on Sabrina the Teenage yeah, yeah, yeah. Witch. That's right. Yeah. 
Yeah. And Richard, Richard was just a riot. He's just loads of fun. He was. I wish, I wish he was on this thing. But uh, well, the, the nice thing about working with those two guys is they they had such yeah. a great chemistry that we could be doing the script, and they could go off script just to do some silliness, but they always knew to bring themselves back. You never had to worry about them going off. Where are we going? Where are we going? They always came back. <laughs> but, uh, but the chemistry was is that Nick treated Richard, uh, Norbert treated Daggett like Nick treated Richard. <laughs> but I, Richard ever knew that. <laughs> That's funny. We all treat Richard that way. <laughs> yes. I, I, we, we actually have another guest with us. Um, I'm not familiar of who this is. So Armig uh, Manokian, I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. Um, would you mind introducing yourself? I'm sorry. Armig's my cousin, and I thought that the Zoom is how <laughs> <laughs> So, hey, come on, turn on your camera. Let's meet him. Yeah, yeah, let's meet him. 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 And they had just cast Norbert as the new version of him, and they were um, getting ready to ship out the first boards. And uh, they said, "Oh, well, we want you to watch all the pilots that we're working on right now, and all the shows that we have in production." And they put they put in the Angry Beavers tape, and I heard um, uh, Daggett's voice, and I said, oh, "That's the guy. That's the guy. That's the trapped like rats guy." And someone was like, "What?" And I was like, "I don't know the name of the movie. I think it's Summer School." Mm -hmm. Is that the one with Mark Harmon? And he was this star. He was like one of the stars of summer school. And he just stood out to me. And I just never forgot his performance. And, <laughs> and, and the other person I was in the room with is like, I have no idea what movie you're talking about. I'm like, it's great. Because he's like, the, eventually the, Mark Harmon says, uh, oh, we're trapped. We're trapped like rats. And that's, and that's uh, that was, so I just, I just remember him constantly getting beat up. And so I was like thrilled. Like, here's this guy who I'd, I'd seen in a movie one time and now I'm working with him. I was like, I don't know, 18 or something. Yeah. But yeah, Richard claims, uh, Richard claims that the uh, Beavers was his first animated show he did. Oh, wow. Really? So we got lucky on that one. Yeah, he went over to Zim right after. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And yeah, I, I worked with Zim. him on uh, on uh, when I was at Warner Brothers on Manicula. Oh wow! And, I've uh, heard about that. Yeah. Yeah, he was. He brought it. He still has it. Richard actually has a, uh, a voice uh, teaching seminar. I think it's an online thing. Yeah. So anyone looking to get into voice talent should look him up. Absolutely. Because he's. Uh, I think he kind of knows what he's doing. Uh -huh. you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, one so, thing I do want to say about the Richard and, you know, they had a voice director who was the one that brought out everything from them. And that was Mitch. And Mitch did it again in Germany when we did Germs Germs. He just hit, hit German actors and he, <laughs> he made them, he, he gave them the, the uh, atmosphere to create their characters. And that's that's Mitch's gift. You know, giving them that kind of freedom and allowing them to go ahead and trusting their talent. A lot of voice directors wouldn't do that. It'd be all about control. So mm -hmm. that's very nice to do, Patty. Also, if you guys remember in those records, we would have guest stars come in. <clears throat> and at first they were kind of taken aback that. Richard and Nick were ad living, but uh, it got to the point one where we'd have a guest star like Ed McMahon or or <laughs> Lou Grant, uh, Ed, Ed Asner, Ed yeah. Asner, uh, and uh, they'd come in and they'd get what's <clears throat> going on, like just go with it. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are going to ad lib, just jump in there. But the funny thing about Ed McMahon coming in, he walks into the booth, sits, gets at his uh, mic. He goes, what voice do you want me to do? I've been watching every year. <laughs> I'm like, Ed McMahon. That's why you're here. <laughs> I guess he thought he was going to be uh, something else. What voices does he do? 
that's the point. Yeah. You should have, you should have said <laughs> I was just wondering if he had some in his back pocket that maybe we didn't know. <clears throat> well, Ed, in this show, you are a, a very young female prostitute. <laughs> <laughs> I Go. Would have <laughs> I went up to Ed McMahon when he came in and I said, hey, Ed, where's my check? And he looked at me and goes, I've never heard that one before. <laughs> uh -huh. Who else did we, we had? We had that guy from the Mel Brooks movie from... Uh, oh, Kenny Mars. Kenny Mars. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, Phyllis Diller? Guy. Wasn't Phyllis Phil Diller? Phyllis Diller, yeah. Phyllis yeah. Diller? Phyllis Diller? Yeah. We we all I remember huddled around her. What did she say, Mike? I feel like the Queen of England. She said, "We're we're all around her," and she and I signed. She just signed my book, and she's like, "Oh wow, I feel like the Queen of England." Ah, <laughs> <laughs> ah. Wow. Mitch had a a thing that I always admired, where he would bring in the people whose movies he had liked <laughs> when he was younger. And a lot of times these were older actors who maybe their career might have hit a stumbling block or something and they hadn't worked in a while. So for them, it was just like, oh, my God, somebody wants me. And for him, it was like, oh, my God, I get to meet William Shallert. And for me, I was like, I get to learn who William Shallert is. And um, uh, we would I would always do. Um, he played Patty Duke's dad, Rob. I just saw you shrug like who? Um, OK, well, he was he was the Patty, scientist Patty in Duke. the in the Halloween special. Um, <laughs> Uh, and uh, I would always because I was I went to all the the, the voice recording sessions because I would sit there next to Mitch and circle which takes he said were the ones he wanted to keep. And um, I would always make a point of looking up their their careers before because the IMD was relatively new IMDB. So I would look up their career and find the most obscure movie they had ever done and then pretend like it was my favorite film of theirs. Oh, no. And um, <laughs> and and I mentioned that and I and I and I did that to Peter Graves, who um, was in the Halloween special. And I I mentioned um, that I had read on the IMDb that James Arness was his brother. And he got really mad like and I was like, oh, my God, I've, I've uncovered <laughs> some sort of Peter Graves, James Arness like family kerfluffle that I had no idea about. Um, and uh, Be Beverly Garland was on and I mentioned, oh, I saw you in like um, Earth conquered the monster or something like that. I can't remember the name of it. It was a, um, a Corman film where basically uh, the, the entire yeah, army fights a carrot essentially from yeah, space. It the world, yeah. What the was world. it? It conquered the world. Yeah. It conquered the world. And, uh, it. and I said, yeah. And I noticed that Lee Marvin, I mean, not Lee Marvin, um, Lee Van Cleef was in that and she got real sad and was like, yeah. Um, you know, he and I had a thing and I was like, no, tell me. And she told me this whole story. This is really sweet about how um, he, she, he and she had met on the set of that movie and that they had kind of a fling and that um, she had to break it off with him because he wouldn't stop drinking. And his career kind of went into a spiral. And then he just resurfaced in um, a, 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 fist, a few dollars more and then the good, bad and the ugly. And it just exploded his career and he had a whole new second wave career and he called her from italy and was like hey i'm doing these weird italian westerns want to come over and and like be my girlfriend again and she said i thought about it for like a good two or three days and i decided no she said but i, I i've always regretted it ever since and i was like yeah because you could have been in the good bad and the ugly <laughs> you could have been in italy yeah <laughs> i have a richard story do you guys remember the episode with the lumberjacks and oh God. i remember that one yeah the, lumberjacks the, delight the timbo rama part so um the lumberjacks were coming to the beaver dam and they want the beavers wanted to wage war against them so norb was giving this speech and saying oh i think it was norb giving this speech yeah and he says um, it's a, a, we're going to challenge them to a duel or something like that. It's on it, it, to a Tim Borama. And then Daggett, Richard goes, it's on Effers. <laughs> and <laughs> that stayed on the cassette and we <laughs> put it in the storyboard. Do you remember that, Rob? Yeah. And then we got like a thing from New York that. <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> you can't do that. Oh, we, we play them right up to the wire. It's like, I'm not here to know. It's still in, of yeah. course. And we get sawed yeah. off at the end. But you had to make sure it still worked and hooked up so we didn't have to do anything and 
post production to cover this we didn't waste any money. hilarious joke that we had going. I feel like you always have to give them one red flag that they can catch, so they think well, they did their job, and then they lay, no, they lay they lay off of everything else. They're like I I kept that effort out of there, and they don't notice that you know like well, that's the, just like dad gets over there slipping a knife into somebody or something. What do they call like the green dog or something like that? You put something in that is so outrageous that you get to keep this really weird joke over here. Oh, um, actually, speaking of the Lumberjack episode, we have a question from the chat from Jenny V, who asks, Lumberjack's delay didn't have a credited writer. Do you know who wrote it? Is this an Alan Smithy situation? <laughs> was it, Keith? <laughs> no, that was written by the late, great Vic Wilson. Mm -hmm. Oh, OK. Who did the voice of uh, Bing. Yes. The voice of Bing as well, yeah. OK. Aww. There was that great character that Nord plays within it, the uh, French Canadian lumberjack Boko Peugeot and his legendary fur hat Dickie, which was played by Daggett, was curled up on his head. Remember that? <laughs> was his, yeah, I just always loved and my legendary fur hat Dickie. <laughs> made, made no sense, but you know. Made, what made I liked sense. was uh, um, Toluca Lake and uh, Oxford and Montalvo. Oh yeah, oh, those, those are great characters. I don't yeah. know if anybody knows where the name Oxford and Montalvo came from, Mitch. Mitch, I do. Mitch, <laughs> we do. We <laughs> do. Of course. Oh, yeah. Mike, do you know? Yeah, Maddie? it was a highway sign, wasn't it? <clears throat> it's a sign off the five Mont going Oxford north. This way in Montalvo, that way. It's uh, <laughs> it's on the it's on the one hundred and one going south. And it, it just says Oxnard Montalvo. Oh, okay. so get out there with your with your with your uh, picture takers and take yeah. Pictures. And of course, Toluca <laughs> Lake is Toluca <Yeah>. Lake. <clears throat> yeah, that's yeah. actually that's that's like my favorite out of everything we've done. It was such a incredible experience. The whole Halloween episode, you know, so oh, yeah. much fun and energy and so creative. And Aaron was excited and stressed out at the same time. <laughs> You know, we had uh, Statima helping out with the models. Statima, amazing artist, yeah. John Statima could draw. Yeah. But you know I, who, amazing. who? The person we need to thank is Mike Lessa for that. He was the line producer on the show, and he used to have a, a budget schedule, a, a budget list of the shows, moderate, medium, <clears throat> doable, and it came to day the earth uh, got screwed up. Impossible. <laughs> Uh, a so, realist. So Mike took two episodes, budgets, and put them together so we could make that Halloween special. Yeah. He wow. made it work. I he think it's one of the best things Nick, uh, that has come out of Nick, uh, even to this day. It's incredible. And I'm, um, I just wish we could have done the second one that uh, that was we were starting, yeah? So yeah. We, rec we recorded that. Recorded it, yeah. We yeah. had uh, Taryn Stamp as Dracula. Yeah. Uh, Sheena Easton as the Gypsy Girl. Yeah. Michael York was Van Helsing. Yeah. It was going to be fun. Yeah. yeah. Terrence Stamp, I, I had a conversation with him where I, I wheeled out one of his like really weird, bad 60s movies. And I was like, it's my favorite movie ever. And he goes, now I know you're taking the piss. <laughs> oh my God, no way. And, and he, he, he was also the guy who I went, oh, you're a genius. Because they said, oh, I, I, I had a real tough time get, like your your agent didn't want to give me your home address or whatever so I couldn't send you the paperwork in advance and he said oh I don't have a home address <laughs> and I said oh just like you just drift from couch to couch and he goes what no I I live in hotels and I was like what and he said I live in hotels I live in hotels do I want to make a bed no do I want to clean my room no I can get food at any time of day and night I like it, it's the place is always clean. I if I don't want to be there, I can just depart tomorrow. I live in hotels and I have done ever since 1962. And I said, OK, OK. And and, and I guess when you and I have acted a lot of actor friends now and, and one of them is the same way. He lives in oh, he lives in hotels. He doesn't um, have a, a, a permanent home. He just goes from set to set to set and in between sets. He he like will like rent an Airbnb for two weeks or whatever, but he's he's in such high demand that he doesn't really ever need to 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 board himself. Mm -hmm. Well, that'd be fun. Yeah. Now, uh, do you actually thing. have? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> he also married to like a string of supermodels. So to me, Terrence Stamp is like that's the that's the goal: Just marry supermodels and live in hotels. <laughs> it's enough. 
Uh, Mitch, you want to explain that one? Oh, wow. That looks really nice. I know uh, that that's actually a question. to get the reflection you. off the... What is that from? Yeah, that is the one of two episodes that uh, the scripts have since been leaked online, but was never made. Uh, one of our um, people, one of our um, listeners for, uh, and viewers from the chat, Norber, was asking a question regarding about that. That there were two episodes that were never <clears throat> released, and one of them was Magnum Opus. So, yeah, why don't you? Uh, and in fact, uh, the script is actually online for people to read. It's on the Angry Beavers wiki, and yeah, I know. Like, it's like, uh... Not me. <laughs> Micah. Not me. That's Micah. Oh, Not me. Nickel. I don't even know where my cassettes of the shows are. Because <laughs> I have the I have the I have the second Halloween special out there somewhere, but if if I knew where it was, I would definitely leak it to the internet, he said. Well, this says uh Jeff Lynn. Um <clears throat> oh, Chicago, yeah, but... Roger Daltrey, Ringo Starr. Oh, we were we were gonna do a Bieber rock opera. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh there were five styles of music in the show. Jeff Lynn was interested. The songs were being written by uh, Charlie Brissett. So I say, we need a Jethro Tull. <clears throat> and we Chicago. And we actually did talk to Chicago because I can't remember the girl's last name. Her name was Megan, who worked at mm -hmm. uh, Nick. And she was going to marry one of the front men on Chicago. She and did marry came him. In. Did she marry him? Yeah, she married the guitarist and then and then left Nickelodeon. Lee Lockname, his name. So uh, we had these people lined up to do this rock opera with these different styles of music. And um, one of the bosses from Nickelodeon mm -hmm. came down and saw the names of the bands and like, kids don't know who they are. Yeah. So, yeah. We didn't do it. But, they, cool but the songs were, they were funny songs. They weren't like straight songs. They were funny songs. Yeah. Um, speaking of which, um, I actually, uh, thanks to uh, Norbert again, um, he actually uh, shared with me what they were. So this is actually the script of Magnum Opus. Again, you can check it out on the Angry Beavers wiki page. So if you're interested in reading what this was whole, this whole yeah, if you if you're interested in reading the whole thing, it's right there for you to see. And Everyone also, another, knows car yeah. cartoons are best absorbed through reading. <laughs> <laughs> If you have an imagination, it works, Micah. And, yes. and what was the other show? The other episode that was not released uh, was uh, Tree Troubles, which was actually written by Micah. And uh, again, the script mm -hmm. is right here for you guys to check it out. Um, let's see, we had um, yeah, Adrian Norbert Daggett, Bill Licking, Suburban Woman, TV announcer Oxnard, Convicts, Cops, Phone voice, Mark, Mike Gerard, and Toluca Lake. Um, <laughs> I that Mike was going to be voiced either by himself or by Richard. Yeah. yeah. And it says right here the synopsis was things turn ugly when Norb and Dag become door to door Christmas tree salesmen during the summer. <laughs> so, yeah, again, if you're interested in reading it, then go check it out. It's right over here by the Angry Beavers wiki page. Well, how many uh, didn't get produced? Bye Bye Beavers didn't also, right? Yeah, that didn't either. Bye. But Norbert uh, and Daggett's like their the, the performance is actually there. Uh, there um, I think it was like Nick and Richard were brought in a few years ago from another. I think it was like a podcast or a radio show. And they actually did say the performance of Bye Bye Beavers. The audio is out there, but it's never been animated. Didn't we do an animatic, Mitch? Did yeah. you? Yeah. We do one? I was boarded. I was boarded, yeah. Boarded? Yeah. Was... Beautiful uh, Bye -bye. boards. Bye Bye Beaver. Keith, did you write that one? Yes, I did. Yes, he did, yeah. And so another, was... another one that wasn't made was uh, Tale of Two Rangers. Mm -hmm. And why wasn't that one made? It was just we ran out of it just it was like at the tail end there when they they ran out of good when, when they said when they when they told us you're no longer wanted here yeah basically you're <laughs> <laughs> like sizing up your offices for family guy or yeah. spinoff or whatever you jokers are have worn out your welcome um and but it was um what's great about that was uh, uh i got to talk to robert stack he did one of the voices, and then the other one was now departed. Uh, R. Lee Ermy. Yes. Oh right. Yeah, I have a picture somewhere of me with those two guys, which is a great souvenir. We recorded that one too, right? That one was recorded. Oh yeah. Recorded oh yeah. They one. came in and they did the voices, and uh, and yeah, we had that one recorded. Bye Bye Beavers was recorded, and when you look at that story, you know why it wasn't done. 
<laughs> but it took they, they took a long time to to notice it. <laughs> well, <laughs> Such a funny. <laughs> well, well, Keith, who wrote Fancy Prancers? Oh, uh, oh, I did. I did. Yeah, that sounds like a Keith one. Yeah. The other Arlie Army one. Yeah, yeah. Where they want. Well, wasn't that the one, Fancy Prance, wasn't that the one where Norbert wanted to do the lipids on Peter yeah. 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 The oh, yeah, yeah. yes, <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah that was, uh... Ermi was great. He could just turn it on and off. My dad was just talking hat. about Ermi the other day, about what a nice guy he was. Yeah. Very nice. Um, there's a few people in the chat asking about what was Tale of Two Rangers about? Wow. What was it about? It was about Come on, the... Keith. Yeah, it was the the, the, the park ranger there, who the beavers are always interacting with. Well, one of the the original ranger who was played by um, was it the who did we have as the What's original his name from Mash? Was it oh Ed, it was Ed Winter, right? Yeah, Ed Winter from Winter. Mash. Yeah, yeah, Ed Winter. But then by the time we got to that last season, Ed Winter wasn't available or <clears throat> whatever. So we so we got Robert Stack to come in for his throat voice. Throat, I think. Right. Yeah, but it was that. Uh, the the uh, original ranger had left the forest to pursue his dream of being in the ice show, and right. and that they then they got a new um, they got the new ranger in who with like was Arlie Ermy who did the drill sergeant in uh, Full Metal Jacket, and <laughs> so he was running the, all the animals in the in the forest ragged doing you know drills and you know things like that going on five mile runs and things and so. But beavers decided they had to bring the old ranger <clears throat> back. Okay. And that was, and I, you know, it, it, what's funny is going through sometimes, if somebody's talking about the show or that, and I go through some of these stories or I go through, because I have a, I pretty much all the scripts on a file. I look at these and we, I go, we did that? I mean, we did so many that yeah. like remember all the stories and, and, and stuff. You go like, well, this is interesting. <laughs> you know, because... And the show was so hard to find for so long. I, I it's just <laughs> in the last year that it's it's on Paramount Plus, and like you can see it there anytime you want. Yeah, yeah but and before if, that, and... it was like real, yeah, you know, hunt hunt for it. Yeah, exactly. Like uh, about ten years ago, the the DVD was out, and yeah. because Shell Factory, I believe, had like lost the rights to it, it became out of print for quite a while. Mm -hmm. Well, there the was print. There was a DVD that was out even farther back that was like a bootleg that somebody had literally shot the episodes off a TV screen and then that was me again. I have a DVD. copy of that. Somebody sent it to me for free. They sent wow. it to me for free and they said, Can you draw me a picture of uh, one of the years? <laughs> I said, Here. And then, uh, yeah. Yeah. That was fun. Yeah. So, um, you know, while we're here, I actually do want to share some fan art from the fans who uh, wanted to Boy. showcase their appreciation for you guys <laughs> and celebration of the 25 years of the Angry Beavers. The first one comes from um, at Score Bunny D on Twitter. And I'm just going to share the screen right now for you guys to see. And uh, let, let me just uh, there we go. Uh, share the screen. Bah, 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 bah. There we go. Okay, and this is what uh, Score Bunny says. Here's Dude. my fan art submission for Patty underscore Beam underscore Miranda's Angry Beaver's <clears throat> 25th anniversary reunion video. Enjoyment shower. Thank you for making my childhood, and I hope that the show come back comes back soon with the hashtag Angry Beavers 25. So thank you very much, Score Bunny D, for the fan art. Really much appreciate it. Excellent. Um, <laughs> so by us, you're fired. We're hiring this new kid. No, it's hard to draw those. Guys. I was counting the whiskers and all that stuff. Yeah, right. Are they on model? Mm -hmm. They were on model. Yeah. So, well, uh, when the show comes back. Oh, yeah, that's actually a question from Score Bunny. So five years ago, when Mitch was on the podcast, he had mentioned about that he was working on a uh, TV movie called The Angry Beavers Respooted. Has there been any <laughs> updates about that since then? The Respoot. Yes. Well, I think after I pitched that, uh, there was a big uh, shakeup at Nick. So it just kind of got lost. Oh, I get it. Be due to the management change. Yeah. But you know, you're sitting on all on. those voices and all those, you got, you got all those voices recorded and Jeff Lynn said he was interested. <laughs> He's still around, right? Yeah, he is. 
Yeah. You yeah. just like Frankenstein one together with the pieces that you have. Oh yeah. And we'll uh, animate it with fan art. And, uh, speaking of fan art, again, I want to share <laughs> off another fan art. So this one is from at Twitter at Aquarius Sun. And uh, this is what Aquarius Sun said. Um, I have fan art of the show. Thank you, Mitch, Micah, and everyone else. Hashtag Angry Beavers 25. And uh, this person has posted it up on <laughs> DeviantArt. So here is the fan art right over here. So thank you very much, Aquarius Yay. Sun, for the fan Yay. art. <laughs> very good. Very, nice. Very cute. Yeah. Sweet. That's sweet. Awesome. Yes. And, uh, and later on, I'm going to show off some 30 second fan videos of you of thanking you guys for the 25 years of Angry Beavers, but we'll get to that in just a moment. I'm going to actually um, encourage our uh, chat to ask any questions if you have any questions regarding about the Angry Beavers. So if you are interested, then uh, please share them on the chat. Um, now going any back to questions. Yes. Do you have any questions? You so, have I'm question gonna... <laughs> <laughs> so while they're getting their questions going, I like to ask you guys, what has been your favorite angry beavers episode? Oh, what do you got? I liked, uh, was it fish and dips or fish and chumps? Fish and dips. Dip. Oh, fish and jumps. <laughs> <laughs> fish and chumps was a Rocco. <laughs> Fish and dips, where it's just like, a, I'm going to catch a big old fish. Fib. And it, it, they have that fib fish argument. This is. Oh, I'm, with the, I'm with Mr. Sabias. I like the Halloween special. Yeah. Yeah. A Halloween special is my favorite. And then second is um, Franz Roman Beavers and anything with El Grapadora in it. Oh, yes. <laughs> I love El Grapadora. I my favorite my my favorite episode of featuring El, El Grapadora is El Casto Malo, where the entire episode is them speaking Spanish. Forgot about that. Yeah. That's I awesome. have a memory from that episode. Please share. I love yeah, to hear so about it. Initially, the character was designed with a butt crack showing. And we finished the whole storyboard and then Rob came back to us and there was just one note that said, get rid of all the butt cracks. So we spent like a week just erasing butt cracks. It wasn't them. my note. <laughs> it was my note. My favorite it was, was stumping uh, for the man. My favorite was all the muscular beaver. Um, ah, muscular beaver. <laughs> beaver. Yeah. Chelsea? Yeah. I... The first muscular beaver is my favorite muscular beaver. And then I really like Alley Oops. It's got a couple of some of my favorite lines in there. And um, there was more I was thinking of the other day. I think it's up all night where he, where Richard says, hey, chicken neck, you should wear a sweater when he accidentally prank calls his mom. Yeah. Uh, I think that's up all night. That's <laughs> and then there was Dagsky and Nor, where the Nickelodeon made us, because it was, Dagskin are pretending to shoot guns because you know, <clears throat> so they were doing their finger things that children do and uh, Nickelodeon object objected. I think um, one of the, the school shootings happened about that time. So Nickelodeon made us put, what was it, Mitch? Uh, was it? Throwing donuts. Donuts. They, they pulled donuts. The they were holding donuts. <laughs> <laughs> even better <laughs> yeah sometimes the notes actually make things better <laughs> I, really, I really enjoyed doing bummer of love because that was the first time we wrote a song remember mitch you yeah. brought in your keyboard i brought in a guitar we plunked out some chords and that was the first tree flower episode <clears throat> and and then that that spurred mike gerard on a guitar buying spree remember that oh jeez. <laughs> <laughs> it turns out one chord and we trucks. were so and the trucks too. Yeah. No. Was it Beaver Fever that had the Barry song at the was that how Beaver Fever started? Was that Barry the Bear saying that oh baby, that Barry White kind oh. of Oh baby. Yeah. <laughs> oh, with music and it was so good. <clears throat> All the songs were so well, they, good. Had, they had to find Barry had lost his groove. That's right. And the beavers were going to help him get his groove back. And so, yeah. And so they beaver fever. And then what was the one, Mitch, uh, that Vic wrote where they were on the beach and then and Nick did that song, went down to the beach. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. It was like it was a beach party song. Yes. 
I, I, you, you cannot you cannot underestimate the um, contribution of Charlie Brissett. Mm -hmm. That's the one that went, yeah, 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 whoa. <laughs> or, yeah, or, uh, or the singing. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. Well, and then of course, <laughs> then of course the ballad of Kid Friendly. Ah, yes, yes. Kid Friendly, yes. Yeah, Kid Friendly came from the note, the constant note we would get from Nickelodeon going like, is this Kid Friendly? <laughs> <laughs> we created the character of Kid Friendly. Oh, right. Did that send up of West? Wasn't he a psychopath? That was like, he was like, he, he was a murderer, essentially. We didn't say well, he was, it. He was a murder. murderous robot that looked like a big egg. And then, right, uh, yeah. And he like he, a Humpty uh, Dumpty kind of a look to him. And Waylon Jennings sang the song, right? Oh, that's right. He, he's, he did, uh, we had to do a sound alike contractually for him but the guy who sang sounded just like him and then uh but he did all the the uh the announcer in between which mm -hmm. episode had um the kind of frank sinatra dean martin yeah. uh, rodent one. singers in it oh, that the, was a good the, song the one with the river rats yeah yeah yeah, yeah the river rats that's that's a great the, yeah. song. i oh. love the zooing time when uh dag ate abraham lincoln's good log cabin and Norb gets thrown in the zoo. So <laughs> Dak feels bad and he feel he turns into like Braveheart. <laughs> He's like, freedom! <laughs> Go rescue. So that was the one we and put Norb's all the having a great time at the zoo. It's like a resort with hanging out with all the girls. <laughs> That's the one where everyone was in the in the episode as beavers, right? Yeah. Yeah, that and the bowling episode. The bowling episode, yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. And Charlie could always handle anything we threw at him. Um he did. Uh, he did like a, uh, um, like a boy, like a like a Hispanic boy band for Ugly Rumors. And they were like Menudo. Yeah. Yeah, like a Menudo kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Also, didn't we have a show where there were sheep and we called them Baba? And yeah. Charlie <laughs> wrote Abba songs for that. Well, Baba Baba was part of Euro Beaver. Right. And yeah. That was when uh, Mario took off. <laughs> yeah. Mario, yeah. Mario Diana storyboard. Fan. Yeah. And that, uh, that uh, Norbert decided that he was going to become a Euro beaver because they don't have to build dams or do anything. They can just be hanging around and be moody all day long. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Rob, you, and that, is that the show where you did the Fellini type film? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and my bird is in it. My dog is in it. Yeah, we, we did uh, some live action and we just did the, where he showed him the Fellini movie. The thing I remember about that one was a, uh, staying late with uh, Mario working on the storyboard in the bullpen. And the only way I could get Mario to stay there and work was to put in Raiders of the Lost Ark. <laughs> and so I knew I had him for 90 minutes, you know. But it was like, he wanted to eat, he wanted to eat. And it's just like, just draw, Mario. Come on, we got to get through this. And he's over there working on this one panel, this one uh, post-it note. And he's covering it up. And I'm like, oh, God, it's got to be either filthy or really funny or both you know and he holds it up and it's this perfectly rendered drawing of steak and eggs and i'm like okay let's go with it. <laughs> it must have taken him a half hour and i'm like dude gotta finish and he's drawing pictures of, let's eat some of this <laughs> this is also this is something i learned on the show that when you're in a room full of artists and animators uh, you have to be careful about what you say and not be too big of a, um, what should we say, a butt hair, because there will be pictures drawn of you. Oh, and, and then, who is and, the worst one? Who is the, who is the worst be, one? And then the picture will be handed to another artist who will then add some animal <clears throat> violating part of your ear and then and then on and on and on. And then by the time it comes back around to you, you go like, okay, I'll shut up. <laughs> Whenever you walk into an animator's office, the first thing you should do is close his door and look at and the look at the back because yeah. that's where all the meanest stuff goes. Because the executives never see the inside of our doors because they just come in and stick their head in and go do this blah 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 and then they leave. So with all our nasty pictures of them are on the back of the door <laughs> and of and, each other. And who drew the <laughs> most? Who drew the most uh, scathing caricatures? Mitch Shower. Uh, Mitch Patty. Shower. <laughs> <laughs> The way, the way Mitch draws, he could, he, he could, he could capture all Very of your fast. insecurities about yourself. It's like, well, I, I have like a I had buck teeth and a little pot belly and just like, <laughs> yeah, he could just destroy you with a little. What was, you did that, you did that caricature of what's his name, uh, 
um, the actor who played Dr. Smith in Lost in Space. Oh, um, Jonathan but, Harris. Yeah. yeah. He was amazing. He was, <laughs> he was amazing. So he, he played it. I don't know, Patricia, if you've ever seen the old Lost in Space. Oh, sure. Okay. So he played the evil Dr. Smith on that show. And yeah, I'm familiar been, with that because I know he did a lot of cartoons as well. So I'm familiar wow. with Jonathan Harris. And he had ju- they young. had just made the new Lost in Space movie. And it was coming out in about two months, a month after we um, we recorded his episode. And I asked him just because like, I was like, to, you know, when the actors arrived, part of my job was to like make them comfortable and get them ready to do their stuff, sign all their paperwork. And I said, oh, so you're going to be in the new movie, like in a cameo? Because I knew that one of the older people was appearing as a, in a cameo. And he said, they asked me. And I said, oh, and what did you say? And he said, well, I told them, of course, I'll be in your movie as Dr. Smith. And they said, no, they want Gary Oldman. And I was like, yeah, well, he's like super famous, so I can understand why they would recast you. And he goes, I told them no way. And I was like, oh, okay. And he goes, but I would do it for $50,000. So anytime like I ever want to get across the idea, I'm asking for somebody an insane amount of money. I always say for $50,000. And then, so they told him, no, no, thank you. We don't want you to play Dr. Smith. And then they called him and asked him, oh, hey, we're, we're about to have the premiere. We're going to do it at, you know, the arc light on sunset. And would you like to come to the premiere? And he goes, of course, of course, I'll come to your premiere. and it was the the entire room was in stitches he was funny start to finish that guy knew exactly what he what he was doing and he just played us all like fiddles and by the end we were just like he he should be a regular on the show i don't know why we didn't make him a regular on the show and frankly he was so great because he didn't have fifty thousand (laughs) dollars you know i think I don't know if Nick has started this rumor or Keith, but uh, the rumor around Nickelodeon was uh, Mitch must must be recording the Beavers today because there's a hearse out front. Because <laughs> <laughs> everybody, everybody we brought in was near death, or they thought they were. <laughs> the, your your uh, teenage heroes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, hey, Beverly you know, Garland hadn't acted in 15 years. She was like, I'm thrilled to get a call. And I was like, well, we're thrilled to have you. But hey, great, great. Chelsea, Chelsea, who did the, who did the, um, in the first uh, Beaver Sisters episode, who did the, uh, the, the She-Ra character or what was that? She's there was a, a narc the character, but there wasn't a, a voice of that, if that's no, what it was, it was, it was, what's her name from, um, Oh, she had the TV show at the time. Oh, uh, Xena Warrior Princess. Yeah, Xena Warrior Princess, right. She did, wasn't, you You guys were fans of hers? Yes, I don't remember there being a voice of that. I'm sorry. No, no, no. no. I think they were just referencing that the fact that in the first um, episode, and I just watched this recently, was that you and Chelsea <laughs> dressed up as the characters and then you were telling, um, you know, Norbert and Daggett, it's like, you know, we're going to, you know, be the you know, princess yeah, and, and yeah, yeah. Gonna go downstairs and attack us. And then you went like, dun, 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 dramatic overload. Some, so, yeah, basically, <laughs> <laughs> so basically you were just like pretending that you were the character, not that the character was actually voiced. I, it was, I guess, based on Xena. I don't. I I remember our parents were played by. I'm so I feel bad that yeah. I don't remember these these people, but it was Richard Dreyfuss's brother, mm-hmm. and um, uh, the woman who does all the names for. She does all the voices. So many voices for The Simpsons. She does Mrs. Carvapel, uh for The Simpsons, and she. Um, I can't think of her name right now. Well, Ruth uh, Buzzy. Ruth Buzzy did the mom on the one. What mom from Uncle. Right, 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 right. right. And what's his name from uh, Night Court, who played Richard Maul, who did the, uh, who was the bailiff, came on, and he had that great line, do I smell cookies? (laughs) (laughs) You you know, uh, I I, I just wanted to say it's, it's, you know, I see RP and Rob and Micah and, and, and Keith regularly, but it's so nice to see, see, um, see, see Mitch and Patty and, and Chelsea, who I haven't seen since you were like that big. Yeah. And I can't believe it's been 25 it's years. Still the same size. I have not gotten any bigger. We <laughs> <laughs> were like that big. Yeah. Patty said earlier how great. I did the same uh, when I was 15, yeah. 
<laughs> Patty said earlier how great Mitch was working with the voice actors, but I got to say for us artists, it was always a treat and incredible just sit there and draw with Mitch. He would come and sit with us and say, I need to be with artists, you know, and I learned so much from from you, Mitch, and I'm so grateful for being on the show. And I just uh, and I haven't seen you for so long. I just want to thank you for having me on it. I appreciate it. And, I, and it's so nice to see you again. I think when Mitch was saying, I just want to be with artists, it was usually after I had been in his office. Yes. He said, I can't take Keith anymore. I want to be with you guys. <laughs> Damn writers. Like, like a writer. I, want to be with artists. I need an excuse. He's bothering, he's bothering me again. <laughs> By the way, uh, Patricia, I want to ask you. Yeah, what's up? If you've ever seen the uh, Sisters pilot. Oh, no, never. Has seen it? I don't think it's ever leaked. <laughs> it's never been leaked online. I mean, you told me about this years it, ago. You, you told I, don't me have this. A DV, I don't have a, I don't have a VCR. Come I on, can't. Micah, start leaking, would you? Yes, please, please tell <laughs> us about this. Because um, for those who didn't tune into the last podcast, so Mitch had revealed to me that there was supposed to be a spinoff series of the Angry Beavers called Simply Sisters. And it was supposed to have um, Stacey and Chelsea as like the main focus. And it was going to have more focus with uh, people producing it who are more, mostly female. So <laughs> that was the only time in which I have ever heard of that because nobody has ever told me about it online or it's never been the information was never there. So please, I am genuinely curious to know more about this. Very hush, hush and whoosh, whoosh. That's right. <laughs> well, uh, it, uh, we took one of the episodes, the last episode of Beavers. We only did to 62 Beavers episodes. Mm -hmm. So uh, we took the budget of the last one to do a pilot. And uh, <clears throat> Chelsea and Stacy were the sisters. Richard played their hamster. Uh, and he had the famous line, he's in the bathroom and he, he's inside the medicine cabinet and he kicks the door open and he's got the toothpaste in his hand and says, so, hey, say hello to my little friend. And I didn't know what that was about, but mm -hmm. we left it in <laughs> until, I, until I saw. Uh, Finally saw Scarface. Scarface. Yeah. Scarface, yeah. <laughs> Spoilers, it was like too young a movie, too young, young a movie for you. It's in color. But, but it's narrated by Alyssa Colano. <laughs> And she plays one of the sisters in the cult, re reminiscing about when they were kids. And it turned out really cute. But they just went on the shelf somewhere. Well, I, I'm hoping on that your whoever... Shelf? You have it on a shelf somewhere? I don't have it. Uh, whoever, I mean, I don't know how some of this stuff gets leaked online. Eventually it does come into the internet, but I'm hoping that someday all the unreleased episode recordings and the... Um, and the pilot of Simply Sisters, if it ever gets leaked, I mean, questions, everybody. I'm sorry, uh, we've gone through 10 minutes and we haven't asked a single question from you guys. So I'm just gonna scroll up through the bunch of questions and I'm gonna pull out something for uh, people to well, answer. Those are hard ones like history. <laughs> I'm just with the word beaver in it. So you math. Yeah. Do math questions. No, yeah. That's, that's <laughs> no math. Mitch, yeah. remember when remember when the show was first greenlit, Jerry Laybourne was still running Nickelodeon. And there was a big question about the title because of the possible sexual entendre of Beaver. And everybody was fretting about it. Do we have to retitle the show? Do we have to do this? And finally, Jerry Laybourne, somebody went to Jerry and, and said, and you know, uh, you know, thought the whole thing about it. And she just went and <laughs> Keep the name, no, you know, keep this, this for kids, you know, forget about it. And then but she immediately left. <laughs> I remember, I remember uh, the pilot when it came back in color, it got delayed in customs. Yeah, right. <laughs> because the show was called Angry Beavers Up All Night, and they're like, uh uh. It's more, it's, so it got delayed in customs. It was like, we were coming up to a deadline. It was like, <laughs> no, it's a cartoon, you guys, just watch it. And they're like, no, no, we have an expert. You know, uh, I don't know if you really wouldn't let it pass customs. <laughs> I don't know if you guys were there or not, but uh, we were three weeks from premiere, and we were sitting in a little kitchenette there at the on Laurel Canyon where we first started mm -hmm. uh, with Mary Harrington. Uh, thank God for Mary Harrington. Yep. Uh, but we were sitting there around the table, like, oh my gosh, we're going to premiere in three weeks. How about that? And Mary Harrington says, just innocently. So how about the main title? <laughs> we have no main title. And we actually laughed about it. Like, 
we've got three weeks to come up with a main title. I remember that time in the house. <laughs> oh, boy. And, and it did, needs to be yeah. animated. <laughs> we did. Uh, Russell uh, Calabrese, he had some animator friends. Mike Lessa, <clears> our <throat> line director, animated the opening horn scene. Uh, I was cleaning up the animation, and we made it. But we had three weeks to generate a main title. And didn't, didn't Mike Gerard also do some of the uh, the artwork for that? Yeah. 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 Because I have one of the... I have one of the original pencil drawings in my beaver memorabilia box. Well, it's one of those of one of the beavers doing the dance thing with the hands yeah. above the head. Yeah. Oh, Keith, can you do that again? Yeah. Very sexy. <laughs> I'm making a gift right now. The... I, should, I, I should have shaved, right? <laughs> Double. Was that answering a question? I don't even remember. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, that no, was no, no, we just, it. Yeah, you just went down another rabbit hole. Yeah. <laughs> Can we answer that okay? <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> well, okay. Well, one of the questions from Norbert again was asking regarding about that. Um, you told uh, Norbert Micah that Nickelodeon doesn't a hundred percent own the rights to the Angry Beavers. If you can explain it more about that. No, I, I I said that when the show first started, it was owned by Gunther Wall and Nickelodeon was licensing it. But eventually Nickelodeon, uh, Mitch, maybe you remember the details of this. Didn't they just buy out Gunther Wall? Yes. Yeah, uh, so I, they own it completely, I think. Gotcha. Okay. I, I tell you, the, uh, Mary Herrick loves to tell this story. We were at Gunther Wall for a year working on the first season and not a script was written. Nothing was written. Uh, because there was just a conflict of interest there. So uh, after about a year, Mary Herrick says, we're going to have breakfast in the morning with management. We want you there at Shea Noon in Duluth. So I say, okay. So I show up, walk in, sit down. Conversation's just going on and on. And Mary finally says, Mitch, we're taking uh, Angry Beavers in the house. How do you feel about that? Well, I was working for Gunther Wall. So you can imagine how awkward <clears throat> mm -hmm. that felt for me to be put on the spot like that. And Mary thought that was hilarious. <laughs> but it all worked out. It all worked out for Gunther Wall. They, you know, they were treated fairly on the deal. Nickelodeon took it in-house. We did the show. So everything turned out fine. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah, so I don't think there's any legal anything that would preclude them from doing a sequel series or movie or anything like that. Yeah. It and I know, I know a lot of people have been wanting to know more about the Angry Beavers Respooted ever since Mitch and I did the podcast together. Uh, from what I was told when you were first working on it was that uh, Daggett was still single, Norbert was married with Tree Faller and they had kids together. And the title was, you know, came from one of your daughters. So that was the only thing I knew about it at the time. And that, I mean, ever since then, no information about it was ever leaked out because uh i'm not sure maybe because um maybe they didn't ask you that further question so has there been any other additional things you've been adding into the story since then well at, at that time at that time for that story chelsea's yes. chelsea's the one that came up with respooted oh okay and i peeked but but uh the idea of dad coming back home you know that he and his brother have gone their separate ways and norm got married and had kids and, but when they come back to the house, they don't come back to the house at the same time because I wanted to do The Shining. Oh. And, and Norbert has two daughters, uh, identical twins. So I just wanted to do The Shining uh, with the Beavers for a special. Mm. But I have two daughters who are identical twins, Mitch, and I dressed them as the Grady twins this year for Christmas. And they, right? won, they won the town um, <clears throat> Halloween costume. Wow. Very good. Live in nations. Come play with us, Timmy. <laughs> <laughs> they they did that, and the crowd went nuts. And they they basically everybody else who was in on stage just went, "Oh, we're done." <laughs> we have to tell them uh, tell them about the part where Toluca Lake marries Barry the bear, right. and uh, all that other stuff that was in there. Really? Wow. <laughs> M Mitch, I have a question. Remember? Um, you think, Mitch? Every... Yeah. No. <laughs> sure. Um, I remember you guys when you and Mike were up there doing a lot of storyboards in the back room. At certain, at one point, wasn't there a movie that we that was they were on a road trip or something like that? Is that something I remember properly? Where where they all went to Vegas, they split up, and 
Were you guys working on something like that? Well, I just, I know that we were, the, the Halloween special that we recorded with Terrence Stamp. Yeah. Uh, that They asked if I wanted to do a Beaver movie. I said, well, let's just take this. It's a tribute to Hammer Horror Films. Let's just take this mm -hmm. and extend it into a movie. Uh, so they were all for that. But uh, I think because uh, Iron Giant, during that time, Iron Giant was being made and they cut the budget in half on mm -hmm. Iron Giant. Then they came to us and like, well, can you do that for half? But we didn't have Iron Giant's budget. So, you know, we couldn't make a movie for $3 million. $12. Oh. All that stuff. So, <laughs> but anyway, that's... Another movie cut their budget. You could cut your movie's budget too, right? Like, <laughs> so I don't I know, don't... Titanic went a year over. Can I go a year over? Like, what the hell? We did so the... Road trip. I don't know about that road trip. When, uh, you guys are talking about the day the Earth stood stupid, right? I'm not thinking of like there's not two Halloween. Specials. There are two Halloween there specials. Halloween one of them is a Dracula, a, a Dracula special. Yeah. yeah, we were. The plan was to do one every year. Yeah. Oh, okay. That would have been really nice. I would have loved to have seen that. I and also have a, but Micah, yeah, you know, you and I are fans of Omega Man, the mm -hmm. and that's what led you to write the Omega Beaver, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember that one. Yeah, but we all we did we did develop a movie pitch because John and Glenn were on board then. And yeah. remember, we did that big, we did that big board. Yeah, I have a photo of that somewhere. Yeah, and that and that was something that at that point in time they were still interested in, like possibly doing the feature. And I think you were going to talk to the powers that be. I don't know where it went after that, but it was. Can I ask you, Keith? Was it the one where the dam it gets it's a flood, the dam gets swept away, and they get wind they wind up at Area 52. Area 52, which John and Glenn later stole for the um for the Looney Tunes movie they worked on. They stole parts of the Angry Beavers movie. <laughs> but we, we were gonna have clips from Paramount movies. Yeah. Uh like the Ten Commandments and things. Incorporate those, John Wayne. Yeah. Uh, maybe running with things like that. And some of it, I think, some of it, I think, came from, uh, or sort of that structure, the idea of doing that came from the Beavis and Butthead movie, yeah. where, where we just get to let them go loose. The beavers are kind of out and on the loose in America, so they could have all of these different kinds of comic misadventures, as we say in the business. And uh, That must be what I'm thinking of then. Okay. Yeah. There were a lot of things that kind of happened at that moment. Um, uh, Iron Giant's failure made every executive in Hollywood say, oh, only CGI animated movies can happen now. Mm -hmm. And that that is unfortunately a thing that lasts to this day. And very rarely do you see a, a 2D <clears throat> animated movie get released to theaters. Yeah, okay. unless of course, if you're either a foreign film or an independent film. Right. Or you're Miyazaki. <laughs> or you're Miyazaki, <laughs> exactly. You're Miyazaki That's, or- That falls into know. both categories, Patty. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, th I think though it, it was around that time, I don't know, some, one of the pilots had tested poorly and I overheard two of our creative <clears throat> execs saying, to, one of them saying to the other creative exec, well, I guess kids just don't like cartoons anymore. Oh, <laughs> and and it was it, it wasn't that okay. You'd made a crummy pilot. It was that animation was like no longer interesting to children. <laughs> they really insane. like you it out. Yeah, yeah they, they like shows that things explode. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's like <laughs> okay. we, we we didn't mess up. Kids have turned on animation. Yeah. Well, that, that's yeah. that's the that's the automatic impulse whenever like a um. When a Western comes out and it does well, suddenly everybody in town wants a Western. And then the first one that fails, they go, the Western is dead again. They never say that when like a cop movie fails. They're not like, no, let's not make any more lawyer shows. This one didn't do well. Like, no, there's always like another there's two more lawyer shows every every day. It's like a Hydra. You cut off one lawyer show's head and two more grow. Um, but with cartoons, you'd mess up one single thing and they're just like, oh, how can we stab this baby in the crib? And you're just like, OK. Oh. Well, early on, Nickelodeon was uh, like nothing else with with Mary and and uh, yeah. and uh, then management changed in the middle of it. Yeah, management kind of changed, and um, yeah, I heard. I, re a, I remember uh, that moment when we got that note where the new president of the company said, "I don't want any more characters appearing in drag in our cartoons. <laughs> drag is not funny." 
And I was like, what are you talking about? Drag is like the second caveman joke after <laughs> him fall down. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> him dress as woman was like the second joke that cavemen invented. And well, it, it was the beginning of kind of the way things are now. We have um, at least seven executives giving notes on any given cartoon now. And if they've never heard the joke before, you can't do it. And I, it, my constant reaction is, have you ever told a joke before? <laughs> I mean, the, the whole spontaneity is like a huge part of telling something that's interesting. Um, mm. well, and I, I get the note, kids won't <laughs> understand that. And it's like, they don't have to. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't understand Monty Python, but I do now. You know, I didn't. Kids love I, to be. I didn't know who Peter Laurie was, but I knew he was funny because he was in Bugs Bunny cartoons. Right, right. Well, no, I, I, the Simpsons was created, and that's not children's. It, maybe it should have gone to Fox. I don't know. <laughs> but I, I think what was interesting, too, about the period when the Beavers came on board was that at that point, Nicktoons were like one off. Every cartoon like had its own crew its own style, its own design. And then even when we went into the studio, we didn't have art departments the way like Warner Brothers and Disney and all that have that everything gets, you know, all, this, all the sausage gets ground through the same machine. It's, it's just kind of like every show that Beavers or that Nickelodeon was doing had its own look and its own feel because it had its own unique art crew. Yeah. And, um, and, you know, production. And all, all the other ones sucked. Ours are still <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. What was that thing with that kid with the big head? <laughs> like a football. Hey, no, no. They did, that, they did the hair and old thing already. <laughs> yeah, he got a movie. Be careful. Oh, I heard that uh, there's a, a Fairly Odd Parents live action series now. Yes, there is. <clears throat> Oh God! Not on Paramount Plus because I saw a new thing on Paramount Plus that said Fairly Odd Parents. I was wondering if that was what that. Was. Yeah, and there's a new Rugrats show on, and they look inhuman. They're just ghastly because it's all well, like they like they didn't look inhuman to begin with. True enough. Well, it's who would they hire to play the Beavers live action? Right. Ooh. Beavers live action. Ooh. You should Ooh. just pay them that, Mitch. You should I'm go in and pay them. Anything. We, we got to put Beavers Patty in a costume. In the real world. That's what they. That's what they want for movies for like animated movies. That's a really. I'll, I'll, just, I'll just say this as an inside joke, Mitch. We'll have to get John Cauley to play one of them. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> oh, no, no. Anyway, don't go looking it up, you guys. Yeah, no. Um, <laughs> um, more questions. Uh, so. Handcuffs, handcuff beaver. Look at that. <laughs> Not okay, that other thing. This with, uh, some booze. Well, <laughs> all right, well, next question. <laughs> and, and Vader Pet yeah. was asking regarding about that um, Daggett's catchphrase, that was nuts, stopped around season three. Was it because you were sick and tired of the catchphrase? That was nuts. I don't know. <laughs> Things just stop being nuts. Okay, there you go. No, I, <laughs> like it, I was said it. It's on my shirt. I said it as Chelsea Beaver in like season whatever that was four or whatever. So maybe I was, yeah. I hadn't <laughs> jumped the shark at that point. There, there you go. She, yeah, it was, it was your catchphrase at that point. Well, also, <laughs> Richard, Richard went through several phases. He went from uh, Daggett and then he became Jack Lemon from Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. <laughs> then he became Bob Hope. <laughs> I mean, he, he would just yeah, I remember it. the Bob Hope thing. Hey, how about that? Oh, well that he did, uh, As a guinea pig, I think. Didn't he do some Bob Hope as a guinea pig in one of the... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's fun. Mm -hmm. so fun. Anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's the question? What's the question? What's All the right, question? next question. So, uh, Score, Score Bunny um, asked this question, and, and I actually am curious about this. So, the um, Norbert and Daggett's birthday, so what? when is it? Birthday's coming. Interesting. Does anybody know? I don't know. Today? Does, I always today make you know the answer, it's January Trisha? January. Or is this a quiz or is this a... <laughs> no, no, no. It was just a today. question. It's oh, just yeah. A... It's, it's uh, February 14th. They April 1st. Valentine's Day. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, they, I don't know. Nobody April 1st. <laughs> make it Arbor Day. Arbor, Arbor Day. Day. There you go. Oh, Norman and, woo. That'd be Norman good. and Daggett's birthday is on Arbor Day. There you go. Whenever that is. <laughs> Whatever that is. 
<laughs> just another tree designed to sell cards. I mean, another <laughs> holiday designed to sell cards. Just, yeah, just make Paper something. Up. <laughs> but the year was 1993, according to this. Okay. Yeah, so that's probably around the time at which you were working on the the show and the pilot and all that stuff. So, um, next question, I guess, uh, you know, you bringing up the fact that Norbert and Treeflower had two daughters. Did you ever come up with their names? No. No? Okay. Didn't get that far. Gotcha. It had to be like flower names, right? But yeah, they're like Lily or Petunia. Petunia. I was thinking Petunia. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking Petunia too. But if they're yeah, beavers, it would be a water lily. Yeah, yeah water lily. Right yeah, it. like lily and petunia. That'd be nice. Yeah. I was <laughs> thinking Dershaw, but that's me. <laughs> sure, why not? <laughs> Steve and Dave. Uh, interesting mm. looking baby. <laughs> Rick. <laughs> Um, now let's see, I think the next one, um, uh, which is not a question necessarily, but, oh, um, there is a question. So no parking Barry, who is from Canada, they were asking regarding about that. There were two particular episodes, like one of them was gift horse that was kind of like off colored. And if, if was there a particular reason why, like the coloring was a little bit off. Michael. Jerry. <laughs> Yeah, we, <laughs> name Jerry Rochelle. Yeah, we screwed up. Okay. No, I like, budget cut in half. No, it's I funny because I wrote that one. Uh, that's with the pine tree, mm -hmm. the little pine tree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Norbert gets the train, and Dagga gets the little green scented pine tree. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes and has really fun good. with it. Well, it was a winter episode, right? It was a so. It was during your blue period. That might have that might have uh, changed the color palette. Uh, uh, the one I like was uh, the Can Canadian episode, and the reason we did the Canadian episode, where it's just like we just did all this Canadian bashing because uh, yeah. Gotcha. Well, I mean, uh, Jenny V even uh, confirms this, saying that it's an error on Amazon Canada. So. Maybe it's Amazon that's doing the mix up and it wasn't you guys. Who knows? It's Canada. Mm. <laughs> it's Bezos. Blame Canada. He's trying to save more money. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of which, um, Norbert asks uh, another question. It's for you, Micah. As the guy who exposed Sima Saragami is the creator of the most infamous no, drops. No, no, no. I have, have, I have no, I have no beef with Sima Saragami. She's a perfectly fine lady. And Okay. That's and perfectly I don't fine. Get I'm not interested. No, that's fine. I was just going to say uh, the question was, uh, do you have any juicy stories about executive meddling or Angry Beavers cancellation? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Robert does. I mean, <laughs> there's there's I, sort of a misimpression in, in fan communities that that executives are our enemies. They're not our enemies. They are meddlesome friends who don't always pay as much attention to the work as you do. That's perfectly fair. Yeah. And, you know, they sometimes give you notes that you go, Oh, okay. That's an interesting take. And oh. your your job as a creator is just to learn to go, hmm, mm hmm, yeah, no, I'll think about that, and then just move on. And then, because a lot of times you just think about it, and it, and and if they could do what we do, they would be able to articulate exactly what the fix is. But if yeah. they could do that, then they would be doing what we do. They just they bump on something. No, no, they know there's a problem there. They don't always know what it is or how to fix it. So they'll say, "Oh, in your touching World War II drama, could you make this guy an alien?" And you go, "Oh, oh, well, let me think on that." And really, what that is is just them saying, "There's a problem here. I don't know what it is. I, I'm just spitting the word alien out." To, mm -hmm. And then you you realize later, "Oh, they just want another Nazi in the in the World War II <clears throat> movie." Okay, yeah, I'll do that. Well, but, they, they have the uh, they have the final financial word, but we also have the advantage. We have the advantage that we can burn them in effigy. Yeah, we can, we can include just them, them in quietly in into our watch. shows and slip them in as as things. But well, also, that, I mean, but, but the, also, they're the I mean, ones that produce the show that create the show. So they want to control us, but they can't draw, well, and they can't, so they they. They hate that they have to depend on us to deliver the product and so there's always that tension you know well i, I can't believe that i'm going to defend uh creative execs because cut him off 
of all of <laughs> mute, mute, mute. Also, I, mean, but also, I think part of their what their job is and what they see their job as being is to protect the brand. And right. when we first started the show, the part of what I was brought on was that they they really loved Mitch's pilot. They loved the animation. They loved the energy. They loved everything. But it didn't quite fit the Nick brand. It didn't have certain elements to it. And I remember when we were doing doing the um, uh, doing the Bible, it was like just like sort of basically taking all this stuff that we'd heard from them. Burp, 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 burp. That's just me, guys. I don't know. <laughs> it, it needs to be kid. It needs to be kid friendly. Yeah. It needs to be this. And so we would just put all of those buzzwords in there so that they would like read it, see it, and be happy that 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 these meetings that they do every week, right, where they sit down and they go over what are the shows doing and, you know, how are we developing this and what's like the big picture. Um, that's kind of what they see themselves as doing. So, yes, they're yeah, Everybody answers somebody. They're just doing yeah. what they and, they're supposed yeah. to be doing. Well, that's, that's, that's where kid, kid, kid Friendly came from, too. Right. right. Yeah. My right. favorite note I ever saw an executive give at Nickelodeon was, there's an angry, uh, not angry, but there's a Hey Arnold episode where Arnold steals a like a hundred year old tortoise from the zoo and sets it free yes. in the wild. And there's a scene where they're driving it to the ocean front so they can, so they can let it loose in the wild. And it came back and they said, could, could the tortoise be wearing a seatbelt? Uh, <laughs> really? It doesn't seem right that this tortoise is not in a seatbelt in a car. It's going to give kids bad ideas. And they always think that kids are like morons who see something and then immediately replicate it by punching their sister in the face or whatever. And so they put That's a seatbelt on it, which was really funny. And then I think later in the episode, they had it in, in one of the kids' baskets on front of the bicycle, and they put a bicycle helmet on it, which was even funnier. So a lot of times you can you can just stunt on their note, by and it can make the... Pushed it the other way. Although, although the, the best note we ever got, it was early on in the season one writing where one of the execs, I will not name names, said to us, a beaver wouldn't say that. And, and, and we, had to remind the, we had to remind the exec that, you know, beavers actually don't talk. Um, There's a question about this, by the way. Uh, no parking Barry again, asking, what are your thoughts on the word shut up? Apparently getting censored on the show. Oh, yeah. That was I, the same guy with the great note about drag. He got beeped. I, <laughs> I, take, I take that out. Any show that I come across shut up or stupid, I take it out. Because what that is, is a wasted opportunity. Time. There's, there's better ways to insult somebody than just to go straight for that. Well, I, I caused a problem with that. We had a show where, and I think it's Ali Oops, mm -hmm. where yes. Norbert said, shut up. So uh, we shouldn't have characters saying shut up. So I thought, oh, it'll be funny if we just bleep it. <laughs> so it's like, bloop up. <laughs> F you. Yeah. yeah. Or F worst. off, right? <laughs> Everyone it thought was... it was way filthier than it was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's shush up on Paramount Plus. So well, the, one of the shush things up. I would do, and it stuck, I was telling somebody about this, um, when you do lip assignment for a character, one of the things I just don't <laughs> like is when a character says, what the? I just, ugh. So I'd always put the, uh, the G mouth at the end. What the? So they whine. <laughs> And there's one, there, I forget what the episode is, but it's a medium shot of Dag, and it's like, whoops, it really went. <laughs> but nobody saw it. I think it aired and everything. I just wow. put it as a gag. He's like, you know, the, the one thing they didn't bump on, it's where the, the beavers have a bunch of sheep in their house. <laughs> uh, and I, don't, I can't remember. Maybe Dag's trying to sleep or something, so he's got a bunch of sheep he's counting. But yeah. they keep multiplying. And... <laughs> Norbert's in a bathtub with a wash rag over his face. And off screen, you can hear, bleh, bleh. <laughs> and Norb says, Dag, what are you doing? Practicing a little uh, animal husband trick? Husband trick. <laughs> <laughs> Not a word was said. <laughs> I didn't know that word. I didn't know that. <laughs> that's that's, that's, that's the whole point of cartoons is you put stuff in there that the kids don't get. And, more and they watch it and they enjoy the jokes that are for them and the uh, parents who are being forced to watch along. Was that oh, written oh, that or was, was it ad-libbed? I think he ad-libbed it. Oh, man. Yeah, that sounds like it. 
Congress. Yeah, Keith wrote it. Input. Oh, Keith is taking credit for that one. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was. Man. We how snuck many, that one in. <laughs> how many kids did you ruin with that line, Mr. Kajark? <laughs> It's a, it's starting in 4H. So, well, that was that was a when I was in Boy Scouts, that was a merit badge you could get was animal husbandry, and it was like <laughs> the Boy Scouts had a field day with that one. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> you don't dangle that in front of boys. Yeah, that's that's going to be the next wave of lawsuits, right? <laughs> but um, anyway. Oh, um, we actually have a $5 super chat uh, from Dan Deku, uh, who says, Hey, Mitch, I want to tell you that I'm a huge fan of the Angry Beavers, and as an aspiring creator and game dev, you're one of my biggest inspirations. Oh, Ooh. how nice. <laughs> That's very nice. Yes, thank, that was very nice. Thank you so much. So let's Hello. talk about the Angry Beavers video game. Oh, yes, <laughs> please do so. Yeah, I'd love to hear about this. Go ahead. <laughs> Mitch? You started it. Oh, yeah, it's... Uh... Um, it's uh, they both get weapons and they walk through town and just destroy shit. Yes, that it's sounds little, awesome. Yeah, it's a little like a fall, it's a little like Fallout Four, but worse. <laughs> like Fallout Four didn't have too much to They're go like, <laughs> Eat it. Angry Beavers. It would actually be a good way to cut the characters out and do new stuff with it. It'd be much cheaper. Well, there you Mitch, go. by the way, I, I, I was at a five below recently and picked up three Angry Beavers shirts for my daughters. Mm. I, I, I walked in, which is a store called Five Below that sells everything. It's five dollars and less. It's like a dollar store, but fancy. Hey, a bargain. Nice. But I didn't there pay was, there was for this one. I was I was flabbergasted. I was just like, what on earth? Like these this is the show I worked on. And my kids were like, I'll take one. I was like, all right. So check your mailbox for your, for your <laughs> So Keith, found, what is your shirt? I found this a couple of weeks ago. Oh, mm -hmm. hey! Yeah. And garage. I don't Here's remember lots. this. No, I don't. Just, yeah. Also, no check out the tricks of Hollywood. They have a lot. Of <laughs> so, um, was the video game canceled because it was too violent, <laughs> or it just fell through? There was no video game. <laughs> <laughs> And that's just Rob having. Yeah, he's oh, there was no. Okay, okay. No, because because he was a game designer. It's like get to it, you know. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Is that video game pitch it. We'll, the only we'll... thing they can do is sue you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Were there any plans for a video game? That I know of. I don't think okay. video games existed when we made it. Just barely. <laughs> just barely. Yeah. It was only yeah. There was only the Nintendo uh, pop open thing. Yeah, oh, yeah. No, you had the, no, I mean, no, around. No. Around the time that you guys were doing the show, uh, it would have been like the the Nintendo 64 and the PlayStation and the I, Sega I, Saturn or something. I, I, I beg to differ. Remember Doom? Oh, yeah, Doom, the, the PC game, yes. And every time there was a new version of it, Mario came around and put it on everyone's computer. Yes. And so that, that first week, <laughs> No work oh God, got done it. because you'd go past everybody, you'd go past everybody's cubicle and everybody's office and they're going. <laughs> I was like, yeah, uh, yeah you're, we're we're on the job here, right? A lot of frustration in the in those offices. Yeah. Invader, Invader Zoom. At, at, uh, but it was also the first time I think any of us had ever had a local area network, which you needed to play like you know twenty people playing Doom because the internet wasn't fast enough at the time. Right. Well, That's called a LAN. I uh, I remember suggesting to Nickelodeon that I have a computer uh, to work on, and they, <laughs> they balked. They're like, "What do you need a computer for?" And I'm like, "I'm working on animatics, man." I, I, <laughs> you don't have what a little computer that like makes it look like it's animated with all the different drawings. You just I'm like, I it. could use one. <laughs> it was one of those goofy IMAX that had the the, the big orange, and they only get the orange ones because. It was either yeah. orange or green for Nickelodeon because it matched the slime or it matched the, you know, the logo. Color. Yeah. But I remember that. You remember that one, Patty? I was thinking of the, the little uh, bubbles, the bubble max that we all got. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. God, that was a long time ago. <laughs> it was, it was. Uh, we have another super chat question from Maldonis the Lynx. Micah, is it true that you worked on the PS2 Charlie and the Chocolate Factory video game? Uh, yes, that was three video games um, that were, and, and they sold it with the same cover on all three games, mm -hmm. which made it so they didn't like 
they were like, huh, I wonder why it's not selling as well as we thought it would. And I'm like, well, because you put the same cover on three different games and called it all the same thing. And had they said, oh, this is a different game than these other two games, they probably would have made three times as much money. Gotcha. <laughs> Um, the next question from Invader Pet. Uh, Mitch, as a fan of B-movies, did you like Mystery Science Theater 3000? Yes, I did. Wow. And now I'm into uh, uh, Joe, uh, Bob Briggs. I'm into... Oh, yeah, Bob Briggs, when he was doing the um, the TNT show, right? Um, what was it like? Um... Last Drive-In with Joe Bob Briggs. Is what yeah. Is now. yeah, that's now... what it's currently, yes, that's what it's currently sure. now. But back in the um, right. 90s, I think he was doing another show where he was like hosting um, like this show where he would be talking about like various um, horror movies and he would be giving them ranks and stuff like that. Yeah. So when MS, when the 3000 came out, I watched like the first two years of that religiously. I really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. uh, then I found Joe Bob and now he's on Shudder and he's going to start up again April 29th. And I, I really like his show he cool. so about B movie. Monster Vision. That's what it was called. Thank you very much, J Dude 93. Monster Vision. Monster yeah. Vision. Monster Vision. Yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> um, uh, Norbert asks another question, and it's an interesting one. I didn't even even consider this. Um, there are some Angry Beavers fans who have the head cannon that Daggett is gay. What do you think of this? Interesting question. What is your thought on this? He wasn't. <laughs> I don't know. That's I'm, I'm actually curious. We never asked. <laughs> He's no. bisexual or He's whatever. Uh, you call it. Yes, <laughs> he was trans. You know. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> Well, how old were they supposed to be, Mitch? I mean, how old? What? They were all, how old were they supposed to be? They were only supposed to be like for one when they moved out of the house, five or six or something. <laughs> well, da weren't Daggett's pronouns thee and thou? <laughs> when he was angry beaver, or when he was muscular beaver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, beaver lives about eight years, so they were one year when they got kicked out of the house, so they're basically about you know yeah. twelve. <laughs> they're dead now. They're dead. Yeah. Yeah, they're dead now. Yeah. yeah. Oof. <laughs> what a grim ending we've just put on the on this. Well, year. I'll liven things up with uh, showing off the fan videos that we had received <clears throat> from our viewers. So why don't we showcase that uh, that we can lighten things up a little bit? <laughs> Never gonna talk to any of you ever. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna put up the fan videos right now. All right. Okay, so I'm just... It's a fan video. You want to see a fan video? <laughs> Is this the... Oh, hold on. I need to actually turn this thing off. There we go. Now we got this. Oh, uh, that's right. I forgot. <laughs> there we go. Now we got things going. Okay, now we can play it. We're here. Let me just play this again. There we go. Hello, Mitch Shower and all the other cast crew from the Anger Beavers who are here. My name is Simeon Davenport. I also go by Norbert Online, and I am a huge fan of the Anger Beavers. It's one of my favorite Nicktoons. I actually have the entire series on DVD, as you can see right here. My favorite episode of the show is Another One Bites the Musk. John Duravlani, if you're here, if you're watching this, keep on writing that amazing episode. Uh, on my YouTube channel called Norbert, I, today I actually uploaded a video one second from every Anger Beavers episode in celebration of the show turning 25 years old today. I also have a series called Beaver Sims, where I basically review an episode of the Anger Beavers, but I kind of nitpick it. I kind of go, go through the flaws of it. I'm kind of like Cinema Sins. I actually have some more questions that I want to ask you guys, but hopefully I can ask those in the live chat. So uh, uh, thank you so much for working on this amazing show. Mitch, thank you for being my childhood. Happy 25th anniversary to this amazing show. Yes, Tony Beaver. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> All right, that is one. Uh, we have another one. That's awesome. That's great. <laughs> I love That's it. Great. We have another one, and I'm just going to pull it up really quick. And this one is from Nasaya Lucero, and she had posted up a TikTok video. So I'm going to post that up in just a moment. Ooh, you're relevant. Whatever that, I want that figure, by the way. That yeah, is a I great think she figure. Made that. <laughs> a song, a beaver song? 
Yeah, the, the, the sound, the, the song is playing in the background. Yes. Oh. I guess it has to be since I don't know how TikTok works in terms of copyright. <laughs> mm. But yes, that figure. I want that figure. I don't know where she got it from, but I want it. <laughs> I, I've never seen it. It looks beautiful. Oh, I, I the Halloween it. costumes. I yeah, it's in the Halloween yeah, costumes. I got yeah, it in the Halloween costumes. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Yeah. You can get them on eBay. Mm. very sweet thank you so much uh, nasaya yeah, so i have um, Where did you get those her first year yeah i have one more and uh this is from uh shomix 2 so i'm just gonna pull this up really quickly <clears throat> and yeah that's pretty much it for the um the fan um posts uh, i just want to again thank you so much for all of those who had sent us our fan art and who sent in the 30 second videos on uh, my oh wow that is very nice the funko figures <laughs> of that rob all right i'm just gonna play off the um the last video and then i think we'll be uh done with the this yeah i think we'll be done here so let me just share that off really quick this is Shamex two and I'm wishing Angry Beavers a happy anniversary, even though I like Renato Moore and also Black Cat from Villain and Down Imperial. So, even though I only have a few more seconds to explain, I do remember watching Angry Beavers a long time ago. All right. And that's it. That is all uh, of our. Very good. <laughs> yeah. So thank you again, everybody. Let me just plug my stuff back. A long time ago. Long time ago. <laughs> well, twenty-five uh, years. Uh, uh, Patricia, uh, first, if we're, uh, since we're going to wrap this up, I want to thank you for <clears throat> maintaining this interest in beavers, because, like you said, we talked several years ago, mm -hmm. and it's because of you that people continue to be interested and see things and know things about the beavers. So thank you for that. And oh, I have thank you. everybody that's here that was able to uh, come and join us today because it's not one person that makes a show. It takes a lot of talent. And I think we were very serendipitous as a group that the Beavers happened because with this particular group of people, uh, it's what made the Beavers special and continues to have a, a huge fan base. So thanks to everyone here. Yes. And thank you for all of the people who are watching the, the live stream. Uh, you know, you guys are a part of this as well. Yes. And I'm just also really thankful for all of you guys for even coming on by and reminiscing about your time working on this show. This this yeah. means a lot, you know. This is really overwhelming to say the least. Well, I actually does yeah. remember that much, so that's, it was no problem. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, closing things off, um, you know, knowing that this is 25 years of Angry Beavers, I mean, what is what has been your response and reaction to all of this? I can't believe they hired me when I was 20, when I was only two years old, and now I'm 27. <laughs> yeah, I was 14. <laughs> me too. I wasn't born yet. She wasn't born yet. <laughs> I was just um, out of prison. So. <laughs> That's not what it says yeah. on your Wikipedia. Yeah, well, I was, I was pregnant uh, when I was working there the last couple of years, and that baby is now graduating grad school. So, wow. <laughs> yeah, good, job. good job, Mom. Thank you. From Georgetown. Nice. And I've got three grandkids. What? Wow. What? <laughs> what? 
jealousy. And what? Uh, all three of my kids have had one so far. Uh, congrats. Well, I mean, hey, at this point, I mean, if rebooted ever happens, I mean, they're going to play the Norbert's daughter. My son has yeah. already claimed a spot. If oh. he- <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm going to see him. Maybe he can play off a character on on the the special. I would love to see the, all of that. And I, I just <laughs> I want to say a word to the uh, to all the fans out there. Beware of cheap Canadian knockoffs. <laughs> <laughs> This is not an actual beaver product, okay? I, I, I love I, that. I, I was duped. Oh no. oh, no. Beavers in Canada. How gullible do they think we are? Uh, well, thank right. you to the fans for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so uh, much, everyone. So, yeah, uh, why don't you guys um, share what you guys are doing currently, any upcoming projects or current projects <clears throat> that you're working on? Where can people find you on on social media? So, yeah, just plug away, everyone. I, I fell into prime time. <clears throat> and uh, I tell you all about the show, but I'm sworn to secrecy at this point. But Fair enough. So, Sorry. I think... Uh, what has happened since uh, we all work for Nickelodeon is that uh, streaming has taken over. So it's a different type of animation world now. Our projects are shorter, and uh, it feels like feels like we're all freelancing again. You know, like in the last year, I've probably worked on four shows. Um, so it's busy. It's busy. Keith. What are you working on? Anybody? What? What are you working on, Keith? I, <laughs> I'm actually teaching writing. That's great. For, <laughs> yeah, for, yeah, for the you know, Sam Houston State <clears throat> University in Texas, and for awesome. uh, University of New Haven, and I'm also being uh, employed by uh, Michael Ceballos when, uh, <laughs> whenever he needs some typing. <laughs> He, uh, who? He me, who, who's, who's that? Yeah, no, Michael for his company and all. Of, it's a it's a very popular, project he's doing. So very popular book series. Mm-hmm. Michael, what are you doing, Michael? Um, well, I'm in Honolulu, Hawaii, right now. Nice. Um, I have a small animation company um, and education company called Twiddle Productions, and we are doing um, cultural animation, and we are creating. Um, uh, coding, uh, educational uh, curriculum, teaching kids how to code, animate, and draw. So we got quite a bit going on. And, and of course, we're working with Keith. Yes, thank you. It's one of our Keiki coding books. Hey. And uh, I'll do a lot of work with RP as well. Um, so Keith, RP, and myself have been um, constantly um, in the groove with each other for the past several years. Oh, Thank you. Oh, and Keith and I have written the Booze Fairy. That's, uh, the, that's the one right there. Uh, there are four cocktail books available on Amazon now. Thank you. <laughs> all right. That's awesome. But, and all the Andy Beavers fans are old enough to drink now. So that's right. That's <laughs> yeah, right. they've been. They, that's true. That's right. But if I could say one more thing, it, uh, this, this, um, again, this, this getting together is so great with, with seeing everybody. But, you know, we've also been constantly kept in touch with each other. Um, once a year uh, during the pandemic, Rob has been doing these drinky Zooms. So uh, <laughs> that's been happening, you know. Where, exactly uh, what it sounds like. We'd, exactly what it sounds like. It's oh, just uh, all animators from different shows getting yeah. together and drinking. And Tip- online. 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 I do that by myself all the time. I'm not impressed by that. <laughs> it's, not, it's not about drinking. It's about getting together on a Friday and debriefing. Not you know, you, not euphemistically, yes. but, but relaxing been, and, and uh, staying together. So I wanted to keep yeah. them together. It's helped the, everyone to be sane during the past two years. I'll say that for sure. As but this group, yeah, this crew has been amazing. And, and uh, it's been, uh, I've worked on projects, but this is the only set of people that I'm constantly in contact with. You know, it's amazing. That's great. Patty, what are you doing these days? Me, um, I'm retired. And mostly I'm just doing oil paintings. That's great. Oh, nice. Yeah. They killed all animators. Yeah. 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 That's what I'm doing now. Do you have a certain topic that you choose to paint, or do you just do all? All landscapes. I'm just landscapes are great. Landscapes. Can people buy your paintings? 
Nope. <laughs> They're all Come on, in- Patty. <laughs> she's hoarding. She's this hoarding. Is, this is your, your target audience here. Uh, yeah. I, I, have gotten, I, I, I need to get better. Okay. Uh, that's fair enough. Patty. <laughs> so, but yes. that's what I'm doing. That's what real artists say. <laughs> RP, what do you I miss you, Patty. Um, well, I kind of found my niche. I uh, Seven years ago, I started a company where... Well, I kind of stumbled onto a company for myself and I produce Armenian artwork, Armenian cultural art, and I manufacture a bunch of products with my artwork. I have over 3000 SKUs of products. Um, My products were selling at the Met for the Armenia exhibit and my business is thriving. So it's doing great. Um, And the name of the website is? It's my name, rpprecorian.com. Right. It, yeah, and then I have uh, actually a couple projects I'm working on with Mike and Keith that will be announced soon, but it, they're passion projects and I couldn't have done it without them too. So that sounds fantastic and I can't wait for it. Right. Yeah, I'm going to leave Mitch for last, but I, I, I'm I currently writing on the uh, upcoming um, Sherlock Holmes series and um, I just sold a live action pilot to a That's great. Yay. Congratulations. It's about time. I cut to who? To a big streamer. Oh, okay. Well, I can't wait for it. Obama? <laughs> no, I wish, yeah. Does it rhyme with mech mix? <laughs> no. Fiddlesticks? Does it rhyme with? Stop asking me because they're, they're like staring at me right now. I can see <laughs> Yeah, everybody's what taking notes. Like <laughs> what, what are you doing, Junior? What are you doing, Mitch? Uh, I have a CG movie coming out on Netflix uh, late <clears> summer <throat> called the Soccer Football Movie, starring Weird Al Yankovic. Wow, <laughs> that's <laughs> exciting! Cool. So it turned out really well. That's great. He's fun, isn't he? He's yes. a nice guy. Super yes. nice guy. And they want to tie the movie into the World Cup or something. So, oh, okay. Um, the World Cup of soccer football. <laughs> <laughs> Mitch, are you online? Are you on the Instagram or anything? How can we follow the Adventures of Mitch. <clears throat> yeah, I'm on Instagram. Um, this is the only one I'm on, actually, I think. Okay. I will find you. Can All I right. get a social media okay. person? Soon. I'm gonna take take over that. Yeah, Chelsea's my social director. Oh, okay, that's cool. All right, nice. I just I just want to do a Manchurian candidate uh, word for for Mitchell, uh, Mitch, and see if he remembers that. Uh, Mitch, yeah. it's triggered. Did you just get triggered? He, well, he would just. Every time we'd go into a recording session and there would be like a little note that I would have, I was sitting back behind it. And, I would, and so, so Mitch would, after a while, just start going, uh, Mitch, because that's what I would, uh, it's my little <laughs> subtle way of going like, you know, we, we got to get that line in there. And, and, and that became, that became our running joke by about season two in the recording sessions, because <laughs> apparently, I, apparently, <laughs> apparently I was, a bit, I was annoying. Ah, gotcha. Well, here's my here's my favorite line from recording. I'm sitting on the couch next to Sheena Easton. Uh huh. She says to me, "I forgot to shave my big toe this morning." Sorry, your whole day that happens. Was that a euphemism? Is she wearing open toe though? And so I looked down like, okay. Then it has, then that's a problem. <laughs> if you're wearing that's a sneaker, big toe. Easton's big toe. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the name of my black metal band. Harry. <laughs> 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 so, so, yeah, there's that. <laughs> <laughs> and as for me, um, you can check me out on my social media pages. I'm on YouTube, youtube.com slash Old School Lane. Old School Lane.net is my website. I'm on Twitter at Patty underscore B underscore Miranda. I uh, have a whole bunch of uh, podcast sites. I'm on um, Anchor, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Radio Public, 
many places. So mm-hmm. usually, yeah, I know. Usually my podcast would go there first and then they'll go up in a few days on YouTube. But this time we're going to do a reversal since we're doing this on YouTube and then they'll this will be on the podcast feeds later on. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I want to thank you guys for coming on to the live stream. This has been awesome. And I want to thank our uh, viewers who are still with us. Uh, thank you so much uh, for the people in the chat and people who have been watching us. We thank you so much. And um, we just want to say once again happy anniversary to angry beavers and uh we hope that you know something new will come out of angry beavers or maybe some old stuff that is still on the shelves of nickelodeon will be leaked for some reason so it'll be new to someone someone. yeah that's true it will be new to someone yes yes okay great all right everyone so thank you so much so take care everyone thank you thank you so much Bye. Bye, bye guys bye